Hi everyone, and welcome to part two of my video series on how to make a KPI scorecard for Power BI. Now as a quick recap, in our last video, I showed you how to make these cards here up at the top. And to give a better example, I'll show you this on my completed report. Up here at the top, I showed you how to create the card for metric name, which actually utilizes a DAX measure. I showed you how to create the store rank as well, using a, a series of ranking plus concatenations to give you that nice text output. And then we also will learn how to calculate total value, monthly average, and then the latest month of sales data as well, or for any of these other metrics. Now the two things I'm going to focus on in today's video for part two is going to be the KPI card that you see here in the middle. Any of the ones in this section is actually utilizing DAX and taking a calculation and converting it into a Unicar character. And then additionally, I want to show us how to add that spark lane here at the very end. Now both of these are custom visuals, so we will learn how to import these from the visual store as well to add them to this file. All right, I'm gonna switch back over to the main page and let's get started. So the first thing that I wanna cover is that KPI card visual. And to do that, I'm gonna import something called cards with states. That is the uh, KPI that's actually found right here. Just to go back here one more time. Those allow both KPI DAX calculations to be shown in there, but they can also be color co coded as you see later on in some of these other ones. So that's the one that I want to use for all of them. So I'm going to come up to the custom visuals here at the top. I'm going to navigate to marketplace. Let that load up. There we are. And if you come here to this section called KPIs, scroll down a little bit. There's a card visual that I really like called Cards with States by OKViz, which is actually the, the custom visuals arm that the SQL BI guys, Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari, that they run um, with a visual developer. I love a lot of their stuff. Uh, many would consider them to often have the best custom visuals that are out in the marketplace right now. So let's go ahead and use this and add this to our report page. Here we are. Add that in. Perfect, visual was successfully imported into this report. Now I wanna come back to this other example page here and talk to you about exactly what this KPI card is that we're doing, because it's gonna require a few steps to get here. So what I've done is I've created either a, an increase or decrease chart symbol to represent whether or not on average over the last six months has there been an, an increase in monthly sales revenue or a decrease. So it's gonna be a few steps to get there. I'm gonna create three calculations. Um, to be able to get to that result, uh, which is that going to be that KPI symbol. I first need to be able to uh, calculate my prior month sales amount. After that, I need to calculate what my monthly um, sales amount is. So the, what is the month over month growth, whether or not it was positive or negative. And then from there, I want to create a window to look at that for the last six months because I want a six month trend. And then finally, I can use that to create this KPI card visual here at the top. So let's start and go through one calculation at a time. So come over to my scorecard and I'm gonna right click on DAX measures and I'm gonna select new measure. Perfect. And coming over here at the top, this is gonna be called PY for, or PM for prior month sales amount. And that's gonna be calculate. And just like with any nested other calculations, you can reference the base calculations that already exist. So I'm gonna calculate my sales amount and I'm gonna use the date add function to shift my dates from my calendar table back one month. So calendar date, I wanna add those. And by add, meaning basically modify, so minus one and month, perfect. And that will return my prior month value. Just to give a quick context so I can uh, kind of just show you how these are calculated out. And I'll go ahead and just bring in month and year, just create a quick table so you can kind of see these values play out. Sales amount, PY or PM. There we are. Let's go ahead and format this as well. Format that as currency. Perfect. There you go. So now you can see on this table that the calculation is working. It's returning the previous month. So now I can do a simple comparison from current and prior and I can get a value here. So now I'm gonna create a new calculation again and this will be my month over a month for MOM. So month over a month sales amount. 
that's going to be equal to sales amount minus the prior month sales amount. And it's a good practice too, whenever you're building out DAX calculations to always watch what that is going to be. And um, that will calculate that here. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and format that as well to currency. Get rid of the decimals. Now, if you notice too, there are some rows where you might not want it to calculate. January, as an example, had no year or no prior month sales amount because that was the first month that any, any values were sold. So we don't actually want a month over month sales amount. It's saying that it had a growth of 138, but it really doesn't have a prior month to compare to. So if you actually want to get rid of that, there is a nice trick where you can add an if statement in here. So if and, which is a two part. So checks first to make sure that sales amount and prior month sales amount exists. There you go. So if that is the case where those both have a value, then it calculates. Otherwise, just return false, which if you close the parentheses without specifying a value, it automatically returns blank. So that extra condition in there, now make sure that the monthly sales amount only calculates if there is a non-blank value for both the current and previous. Now that we have all three of these, I have my sales amount, my prior month sales amount, and that monthly sales amount delta, whether or not it's grown or shrunk, I now want to calculate over the last six months, on average, has it gone up or has it gone down? So that will be the final calculation that I'll make before creating the actual KPI calculation in DAX. I'm going to come up to DAX measures again, right click and select new measure. Now I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm going to copy and paste the formula from my other workbook so I don't have to type the whole thing out and format it, but I'm going to walk through at least a little bit of what is in here. So here's my sales amount six month trend. So the very first thing that I do here at the top, I'm declaring a variable for last sales date. Because what I want to do is I want to go back six months from whatever my most recent sales day is. And that's what that's going to accomplish. So I, I put my variable in and return it. And then the actual calculation is going to be down here below, which is going to be the average X. And that's going to be dates between calendar month and year. So it's the, going to be the number of months. So each month gets essentially a single row that's being averaged. So say January, February, March, April, May, uh, June, and then July. So in this, it goes and does date add. So it looks for the very first month, which is going to be the start of month from the last sales date. So if the sales date was July 5th, that would take it to the start of the month, which is July 1st, and then subtract five months from that, which would essentially put it as February 1st. And then it also takes the end of the month, last sale date that you see there, and goes to the very end of that month. So the window is a six month full window that you are looking at, always going from the very last month of sales five months prior to that for a full six month window. And it is calculating the average of that month over month sales amount. So then that's what we want. We want a single value that determines our average for that six months at a month level. Hit enter. There we are. I'm gonna bring that in as a separate card just to put that here for a minute. Let's go ahead and format that as currency. There we are. And if you look at this value here, 6,228, and you actually did some quick math in your head, this is the average of all the last six months. So December, November, October, September, August, and June. These month over month averages, if you added these up together and divided by six, that is the value you want returned. So now we have in the back end our six month average being calculated. And now we can finally create that KPI. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna right click and select new measure again. And I'm still gonna cheat a little bit. I'm gonna do a copy and paste method just cause I, I wanna keep time down. But let me walk you through this calculation that I'm gonna do. So sales, sales turn KPI is gonna declare three variables. It's gonna be the variable for the icon at the top, which is the chart increase icon, a variable for the chart decrease icon, and that's a function called Unicar. So you just provide the Unicar number in there and it will return that symbol. That's a really cool thing about DAX is it can return those. And then there's the six month trend which is equal to that other calculation that I already have written. And now the actual calculation itself is gonna be nice and clean. It's gonna be the nested if statement or switch equals true. And if the six month trend is greater than or equal to zero, meaning it's essentially a growth, show the chart increase icon. If it's less than or equal to zero or there is a decrease, show the chart decrease icon. I'm gonna hit okay. 
and let that also save into here. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and copy and paste this card so we can kind of keep the rough consistency and size. I'm gonna come over here to visualizations and change that to the cards with states. There we are. Shrink that down a little bit. And I'm going to swap this out for that sales turn KPI right there. There we go. So what that's actually saying is it's 6,228 is a positive, so it's gonna increase. Let me further clean this up a little bit before we get to the final polish of the very last video with all these cards. I'm gonna remove the category label because I don't need that. And what I can also do is decrease the data label font size, maybe make that a little bit smaller. Let's say it's like 25 should be good. Yep, perfect. Make that a little bit smaller. There we are. Let's see if I can find a store too. It has it, ah, there we go, decrease, see? Uh, the Beaumont number one store had a minus 17,000, so that gets a decrease. So if I can find there's a positive, there's a negative. So you can see how it's working and you can watch all of your calculations processing with it. So it's a great way to kind of test and debug it as you build these out. Now, the last thing that I wanna show you, coming over here to final scorecard example, is that spark line you see over on the right. It's just a really good way of seeing the trend. And it, in our case with the little chart icon we, that we have as well, indicates what that six month trend is at the very end of it. Now this one's gonna be fairly easy to make. All we'll need to do is add the visual from the store and then go ahead and put some data in there. So I'm gonna come back to the scorecard. I'm gonna go back to my visualization store. Gonna come up to home and from marketplace. And I'm gonna search for Sparkline. And same thing again, another okay vis, uh, visual. And trust me when I say that I use them a lot. I'm in no way promoting them specifically because I know them or anything. It's the fact that I really do think they are some really good quality visuals. Uh, Marco or Abelter, if you happen to be hearing this, like, yes, I 100% uh, I really enjoy the, the visuals that you guys make. So hopefully you keep making them. Um, but yeah, just, just as a quick side note. So let's go ahead and add this. Now I've already added it to a previous version of the report, which is why I get the update, but you won't get that if you added this for the first time. All right, it's been successfully imported. Gonna do that same thing one more time, just kind of copy and paste to keep that height consistent. I'm gonna swap this out for the spark line. There we are. Now what I wanna put onto my trend line, I wanna get rid of the KPI. And I'm gonna swap it out for sales. Oops. Swap that out for sales amount. There we are. Now you need something on the axis. So I'm gonna look for month to use month and year for my calendar table. You can use date if you want. It's just the line's gonna be too varied. If I use it at that level, I'd rather have it at this level. There we go. Now there's a couple of the things that we can tweak to get it looking closer to that other one that I did. So I'm gonna come over here to the paint roller for the formatter. I'm gonna turn off, turn off the category label, step one. Now, the other thing that I like to do too is come down to the line. I'm gonna make that a little bit thicker. There we are, see? It's, it uh, makes it pop a little bit more and that's fine with me. Um, appearance, I actually smoothed it out just to make the line a little bit smoother. Beautiful. Um, area, I actually turn on too. That colors it in, helps make it stand out a bit more so you can see the peaks and valleys. And then the final thing too is coming down to points and I turn on the current point at the very, very end. So if this happens to be different, let's find another store. Here we go. So now you have all three points. You have the high, you have the low, plus you have that last point at the very, very end. All right, that about covers it for this video. I've managed to walk you through this KPI card here, plus this custom spark line, and then the DAX supporting both of them. In the next video for part three, I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through these next custom visual KPI cards here right in the middle where you get to see how to do the conditional formatting and to be able to color code those, as well as create a, a different set of those Unicard characters shown in here. The final thing that I will mention is if you are interested in creating these Unicard symbols, there is a great blog post by Matt Allington that is called Unicar in DAX that I will make sure to link to in the video description as well. Um, if you liked this video, please make sure to like or subscribe and otherwise I will see you in our next video.